This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Big week in soccer coming up overseas because we have both the EPL uh, Match Week 30. And the UCL semifinals coming up next week. We're going to break down both of those loss and cast, getting his read on the EPL and UCL. And then we'll talk some Formula One and NASCAR later on. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Numberfire, joined here as mentioned by Austin Cast. You can find him on Twitter at Austin Cast. You can check out his work over at Numberfire, where he is a senior editor. Austin, you're on a heater right now in your soccer recommendations here on the show so how you doing today doing well yeah uh just gotta enjoy the good betting breaks when you get them so yeah everything's good how are you doing I'm doing great in part because you've given us such good recommendations. Uh, I appreciate if I can, if I can make money without having to work too hard, like running my own stuff, I always trust like my stuff more in general, but if I can like have some easy wins via Austin Cass, I'm going to take that every time. Uh, so I appreciate how things have gone there. And I feel like you're kind of on your, your Erling Holland streak here uh, from a betting perspective, heading into the semifinals. Yeah. I don't think I'm quite his level, but yeah, things have been going well. So hopefully we can keep it going. I hope we can as well. We're going to talk about the EPL first, then we'll run through the UCL stuff uh, with the both the semifinal matches. We'll run through both of them individually and talk some futures to get you ready for that. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. If you want some thoughts on the Kentucky Derby, we talked to Christina Blacker of FanDuel TV, getting her read on this year's field and the post draw and much more. Find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed or over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Let's start things off here with the EPL loss, and it is again in match week 35 in the English Premier League. We have a lot of games, uh, 10 different matches from Saturday through Monday. So starting off with those in the EPL, where are you seeing value for this week? Uh, my favorite Premier League bet this weekend is Man City to score over two and a half goals against Leeds. That's priced at minus 164. Um City's minus 700 on the money line, so this is obviously a pretty <laughs> offsided matchup. Uh, City are absolutely flying right now. Leeds are really, really struggling. Leeds have been leaking goals. They've conceded multiple goals in nine of their previous 11 fixtures across all competitions. They've allowed five goals to Crystal Palace and four to Bournemouth uh, during that span, so it's not just the top sides that are giving them trouble. City are probably the last team in the world you want to be facing. When you're out of whack on defense, um, City have scored three plus goals in nine of their last 11 outings, and they've tallied 40 goals over those 11 matches, which is just crazy. Um, The only thing working in Leeds' favor is that City have Champions League coming Mm -hmm. up next midweek, which we're going to be talking about here in a few minutes. But even if City rotate the squad some, uh, don't keep the pedal to the metal all match, or just aren't focused on the game, I still think Leeds are going to have a a huge task in front of them to keep this scoreline respectable. So I'm on City at minus 164 to score at least three goals. Yeah, that is uh, for Man City versus Leeds again, over two and a half goals uh, for Man City is minus 164. And your read on this is that the depth on Man City is enough where even if they do decide to rest some guys for the UCL matches next week, they should still be good to at least get to this number, correct? Yep, absolutely. And they, they actually just didn't start Kevin De Bruyne last night against West Ham. So I would assume that he'll play this weekend unless there's some injury we don't know about. So even if somebody like Holland sits, they have enough attacking depth to cause Leeds plenty of problems for the entirety of the 90 minutes. Okay, so that's the Man City versus Leeds match. Anything else you like across the EPL for this week? Um, not really, to yeah. be honest. Not really. There's there's a lot of games, and it should be some fun matchups, but there's nothing that really jumped out to me. Okay, well, let's talk about the headliners then and talk about the UEFA Champions League semifinals. we got two matches coming up, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. Let's start things off with the individual matches, then we'll talk about the futures market after that. The first match is Tuesday, Real Madrid against Man City. Man City right now, plus 110 on the money line. Real Madrid is at plus 230. When you look at this matchup, Austin, it seems like everything's going to come up Man City thus far. 
Does that continue? Can they win this match? What's your read on the betting markets here? Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to take Man City at plus 110 and keep the uh, theme going of praising City. Um, <laughs> but we, I wish I had the records to see this, but we can almost never get Man City at plus money. Um, and as we just said, they're peaking at the right time. It's their best form of the season. In the knockout rounds in the Champions League so far, they topped RB Leipzig 8-1 to on aggregate and then Bayern Munich 4-1 to in the quarterfinals. Something that makes me feel a little bit better about City than – maybe I have in pre previous seasons when they've continually come up short in the Champions League is that they've shown an ability to manage games when needed, and that should really come in handy for this match at the Bernabeu. And just overall, City are the better side. By FB refs expected goals model, uh, City own an XG differential per 90 minutes of plus 1.37. That's the top mark across Europe's big five leagues. Real Madrid's XG differential is pl uh, plus 1.11. Still a good number, but not quite... City's level. It's never easy to compare stats from teams in different domestic leagues, but those numbers likely flatter City because the Premier League's a notch above La Liga, which is Real Madrid's domestic league. Um, it's always scary to bet against Real Madrid in this competition. City were better than Real Madrid last year, but Real Madrid upset them and then won the Champions League. So, uh, and anything can happen at the Bernabeu. It's one of the toughest places to play in Europe. But for me, everything points to City, and I think they win next week's first leg. Now, you mentioned the issues that they've had in the UEFA Champions League. Do you think that that is giving us a bit of a discount on the price here of Man City at plus 110? Is that history playing into this number at all? I don't think so. They've actually been in the futures market, like the favorite to win it all along. Mm -hmm. um, even when they got a tough draw and had to play Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals, they were still a pretty decent favorite. So... I think the market is viewing them as clearly the best team in Europe. That's been the case uh, at least last year and maybe the year before that too. And they've just kind of found a way to lose, maybe had some bad luck. Um, yeah. But yeah, just in the past, City have been very attack-minded and kind of played one way all the time. And that's come back to bite them a little bit. And this year they've shown the ability to be more defensive, more boring basically when they need to be. And that's something that, is going to come in handy this first leg, I think. Okay, so we, we are on Man City plus 110 to win in 90 minutes plus stoppage time against Real Madrid for Tuesday's match. On Wednesday, we get Milan against Inter, and we've seen some movement towards Inter in the betting markets recently because it was uh, plus 175 on both teams last night. It is now plus 160 for Inter to win, plus 185 for Milan. I mean, look at this matchup, Austin. Where do you see value, if any, in Fan at FanDuel Sportsbook right now? Yeah, as the odds indicate, this is a really tough one to call. <clears throat> On paper, it's definitely the weaker uh, semifinal of the two. But with these two clubs sharing a city and a stadium, it should be just like a really fun atmosphere both games. Yeah. As you said, the lines have been moving Inter's way, and that's the side I want to be on, specifically Inter at minus 120 in the tie no bet market. Uh, these two teams are just two points apart in the Serie A table, but uh, by expected goals, Inter are the better side by a pretty wide margin. <clears throat> mm. They have an expected goal differential of plus 32.3, which is actually tops in Serie A despite them being fourth. Uh, AC Milan's XG differential is only plus 14.7. On top of that, Milan are somewhat lucky to be here. By expected goals, they narrowly lost each leg against Napoli in the last round, and that was with Napoli having to play without star striker Victor Oshiman in the first leg. So I'm going to take Inter at minus 120 in the tie no bet market because I think they're a decent bit better than Milan. I think you can also make an argument to take draw at plus 210 if you wanted, but that's not the route I'm going to go. Yeah, the draw market is also lengthened. I believe it was 2-1 to one yesterday uh, for there to be a draw. It is now plus 210. Inter down to minus 120 in the tie no bet market. Uh, Milan is at plus 102 there as well. So Austin siding with Inter in the second game, siding with Man City against Real Madrid at plus 110, uh, and liking Man City over two and a half goals versus Leeds this weekend. And Austin, if the past month or so as any indication those are looking pretty solid that is austin cass make sure you check him out on twitter at austin cass find his work over at numberfire.com awesome let's uh keep this heater rolling but overall just enjoy the soccer this week uh have some fun watching that which should be some really good matches and we'll talk to you again here in the very near future 
Sounds good. Thank you very much. See you, Jim. All righty. Appreciate you. Uh, that is Austin Cass again. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass and check out his EPL work over at numberfire.com. We're going to dig into Formula One at Miami and NASCAR in Kansas here in just one second. But first, the biggest horse race of the year is here, and there's no better time to get in on the action on FanDuel Racing because right now, all customers can get a no sweat derby bet up to $20. That means you get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Racing app is super easy to use safe and secure, and when you win, you get paid fast. So don't miss out. The Derby is coming up this Saturday. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat Derby bet up to $20 on FanDuel Racing. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first Derby win wager. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Now let's just focus here and talk about some other racing for this weekend. Uh, we got Formula One in Miami. We've got NASCAR in Kansas. We've got some stuff to focus on in both of these. And starting off with Formula One, it's their uh, second time at the Miami Grand Prix. It's a short turnaround after Azerbaijan and Baku this past week. And if you've been listening to the F1 segments on the show recently, you're probably not going to be surprised. But my favorite bet for this week, once again, is on Lance Stroll. Now, Stroll didn't come through for us last week because what the recommendation was was a ladder bet where you put some on his top 10 odds, put some on top six, and then put some on the podium like a little sprinkle there. And Stroll finished seventh, so the top 10 bet cash, but overall, not what you're looking for in that kind of bet. So it didn't work out with just the top 10 hitting there. But now we're getting pretty favorable odds here on Stroll to finish inside the top six. His top six odds are down to minus 105. And I'd honestly... Be okay sticking to just that versus going with the ladder approach this week. I've been pretty well above it, uh, but he is also a value in the top 10 market uh, and in the podium market as well. But if we're talking just about the top six odds, it is concerning to see that Ferrari was so fast this past weekend. I am not sure how much that will translate here because maybe they brought upgrades to Baku that really led to all that pace they had. But Stroll, even with Ferrari being better, did still finish seventh in Azerbaijan, and Aston Martin was having some major issues with their DRS flaps. So in qualifying, they weren't able to go full out because they, the DRS was malfunctioning. Still finished seventh there. At minus 105, I do like Stroll to finish inside the top six. Personally, I will be adding on the podium as well. He's plus 850. It's going to be a very, you know, I want to, again, ladder this where I profit if he finishes inside the top six, take some of that profit, put it on the podium as well. Plus 850. He's a pretty good value there by my numbers. So I'll take Stroll minus 105 top six and then add a little bit on the podium at plus 850, but not sure if I can recommend that one necessarily because of how things have gone with him so far. The other bet I like is for Nico Hulkenberg to finish inside the top 10. That is plus 250 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I understand why this number is long because we've had four races so far. Hulkenberg just one top 10 finish, which means... His top 10 rate is 25%. His implied odds here are 28.6%. But part of this uh, analysis for me is rain. Uh, it looks like there is a chance of rain on Sunday, which does introduce more uncertainty. It could be, it could lead to more crashes, more stuff like that. But taking a guy who is plus money for a top 10, I think benefits if there is some moisture in the forecast for Sunday. It's not a huge part of it, but it does increase the variance a bit. Second is that Hulkenberg has been really fast in qualifying this year, broadly. He has made it to Q3, so finished inside the, or qualified inside the top 10, three out of four races. Didn't do that last week, which is pretty tough, but he's overall qualifying really well. And as always, qualifying matters a lot in Formula One. He is experienced. There may be uncertainty with the rain. I think that's enough to make Hulkenberg at plus 250 for a top 10 a pretty good value. If you, if you prefer Kevin Magnuson at Haas, he's also plus 250. I'm a bit below the implied odds on Magnuson because my numbers are a bit higher on Hulkenberg, but I think both those guys are interesting. So a uh, kind of a home race for Haas. I don't know if they're like 
in theory, an American team, but they're more broadly based in Britain. But, you know, uh, we can call it a home race for them. So Hulkenberg top 10 plus 250 and then Lance Stroll top six at minus 105. The official recommendations, I don't mind if you want to add Stroll podium plus 850 if you want to have some fun, but can't make that an official recommendation for the show. Talking about NASCAR, I have not gotten time to run my uh, truck series numbers yet. So no truck series recommendations as of now. I'll circle back on Twitter probably tomorrow. Maybe later, well, probably tomorrow, uh, to put out some truck series uh, betting odds based on my model and the odds at FanDuel shifted uh, between when I was taking my notes earlier on today and now Kyle Larson was five to one. He's now four to one to win. Um, so the recommended bet that I had is now gone. I'm assuming, though, that Larson is still five to one elsewhere. Let me just check that really quick to make sure. Um, I can actually justify still recommending this because if he's if he's five to one at FanDuel, yeah, okay, you can still get five to one on Larson elsewhere, four to one at FanDuel, which is a bummer. But if you can still get the five to one elsewhere, I would take that. And it's the exact same place we were last week. I realize that the odds at five to one even are super short, but it's there for a reason. Obviously, he's gotten some interest at FanDuel. I think that's justified. Larson crazy fast in Vegas the first race this year he led 63 laps there and the reason that Vegas ma uh, matters is because it's the lone race non-drafting version at a mile and a half track so far this year in that race Larson led 63 laps he was also good on the mile and a half tracks last year even if he wasn't as dominant as he was back in 2021 he won Homestead last year finished runner-up in Vegas and Kansas he led 18 percent of the laps that he ran and that's around where my model has him this week. So at four to one, not a value at FanDuel. Uh, I can't recommend that. But at five to one, 16.7% implied odds. I think that's still a good number. So assuming you can still get uh, Larson to finish, uh, Larson to win at five to one or longer, I would take that. Um, again, with how fast Hendrick was both in Fontana and in Vegas, I think this is good value. So Larson to me, if you can get five to one, still a good bet there. FanDuel does not have top 10 odds up yet, so every recommendation here is elsewhere. Don't tell my bosses. But anyway, there are some numbers I like elsewhere. Uh, those are Ross Chastain, minus 143 at uh, Bet Rivers and AJ Allmendinger at 5-1. to one. That is available at William Hill. I believe Bet MGM has that as well. Chastain, really good on the mile-and-a-half tracks in the next-gen era. They've run eight races on a mile-and-a-half track in the next-gen cars, and Chastain has five top 10s, which is a 62.5% rate. His implied odds are 58%. You could argue that Chastain is unlucky to have just five top 10s in that time because he has had a top 10 average running position in every single race thus far. All five of those top 10s where he did finish there were seventh or better. So he's not just squeaking by. He's had uh, five finishes of seventh or better, three podiums. I do have some value on Chastain to win a 12 to one. Let's see if he's lengthened because if he lengthened to make space for, uh, for Larson shortening, he did not. He's still 12 to one. I could consider Chastain 12 to one as being a recommendation, uh, given that's a, there is a bit of value there, but, uh, I think the top 10 odds at minus minus one forty three are better Chastain super fast in Vegas did not finish top 10, but had a fifth place average running position there. So I think it'll be fast this week too. So Ross Chastain minus minus one forty three that, that is available at bet rivers. He's also minus minus one fifty. William Hill shops. Don't mind that either. AJ Allmendinger has mentioned. The other one is five to one. The Colin cars last year down the stretch really fast in the playoffs on the mile and a half track. So they both Dinger and with Justin Haley uh, Dinger top 10 in both Homestead and Vegas. He had a podium actually in Homestead. Justin Haley finished third in Texas and he was also eighth in Vegas this year. The one mile and a half track though. That one is pretty fluky. His average running position was 19th. So that was not based on speed. Just benefited from some late race. Uh, I think he took four tires and everyone else took two, something like that. He benefited from some chaos towards the end. Dinger, though, specifically, his implied odds for a top 10 are 16.7%. I've got him at 22.4%. That's enough value for me to dive in. So I like Kyle Larson. Assuming you can get five to one somewhere, and I think you can based on what I'm seeing right now. I like Chastain top 10 at minus 143 at Bet Rivers, and I like Dinger top 10 at five to one. Um, which you can get at BetMGM and William Hill. So kind of a bummer when things move mid-recording, but you can still get it elsewhere. So shop around on Kyle Larson. If you can get five to one still, that is going to be my favorite bet 
for this week. That's all we've got here on the on covering the spread for today. Want to give a big thank you to Austin Cass for singing by breaking down his thoughts on the EPL and the UCL. Find him on Twitter at Austin Cass and check out his work over at Number Fire. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes. J I M S A N N E S. As mentioned, I should have um, some truck series stuff up there as well. Not sure if we'll find value, but we'll always post my Sims. Uh, over on the truck series side of things later on this week. Do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Kentucky Derby Show with Christina Blacker over on the FanDuel YouTube page and on Covering the Spread. If you like what you hear, hit the thumbs up on YouTube or give us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. Want to thank you all for tuning in. We are back once again tomorrow talking some MLB, NBA, NHL, whatever may be on our minds for tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 